Good morning everyone, I hope you're all doing fantastic. It's been a while since we got to deliver some VR and AR news, however some big things have piled up throughout the last few days, so I'm here to bring it to you. With all that being said, I'm Mystical, and let's jump right into the video. First things first, we've got some pretty big Quest success. With news that the Quest has had 6.37 million monthly active players late last year. According to a report from the Wall Street Journal, the new Wall Street Journal report cites internal documents from Meta dated around October 2022. In that same month, the Wall Street Journal also reports that the Meta Quest platform saw 6.37 37 million active monthly users. Last month, The Verge's Alex Heath detailed Meta's internal roadmap presentation from Meta's VP of VR, Mark Robkin, that confirmed the company has sold nearly 20 million Quest headsets, almost matching the Xbox Series X and S sales estimates from December of 2022. If both reports are accurate, we could be starting to get a picture of just how many Quest headsets end up in disuse. Now, these are some interesting reports, as first we had reports of low retention, even if 20 million units had been sold, 6.37 million people using the Quest headsets every month is still a pretty high amount, even though it does make you wonder where the rest of the people have disappeared to. But to be honest with you, I think that this shows us how many people are still interested in virtual reality as a whole. Those numbers in general have grown quite high throughout the last few years, and with the Quest 3 and multiple other devices on the horizon, I think we can be looking forward to seeing more people inside virtual reality in the near future. And talking about some of those new headsets, I have some exciting news for those of you that have been waiting on the Pimax portal. As Pimax reports that they're going to be shipping the Pimax portal to backers this month. Pimax has announced that its hybrid VR headset based on a Nintendo Switch style console is almost ready for launch, as the company prepares to ship all Kickstarter backers in April of 2023. Over the years, the Shanghai-based company has been known for its wide field of view FOV PC VR headsets, which include large high-resolution displays and wide FOV optics, making Pimax one of the few to offer such devices directly to consumers. With the recent announcement of the Portal and the Pimax Crystal, the company seems to be striking out in a new direction direction from its PC VR roots, a standalone does seem to be the way to go. That seems to be where most of the market is right now, and it seems to be what most users want, as it's much easier for someone to buy a console that is an all-in-one and has everything and not have to buy a beefy computer to come with it. Then in the future, if they ever want to upgrade, they could also use a beefy PC to play PC VR wirelessly. The Portal is a very, very interesting device, and a ton of people are very interested in it. I got to try a pre-production model at an event that I went to in the Netherlands. All I got to see was a 360 image of a canyon. It did have 6 off tracking and I can confirm that works and the interface on it looks really interesting. I also got to play around with a few games with it in standalone Android gaming mode as the portal can also be an Android gaming console. That is a device I personally am super excited for and one that I want to see the production model for to see what it actually works like, as again, I didn't get to try the entire experience here, so I can't speak for how well it will work. People are very interested, but also incredibly skeptical, and I fully understand that. So I'm very excited to see Pimax shipping soon, and hopefully we'll get to see how good this thing truly is. Okay, now onto the third headset. Yes, we have another one coming, and this one, I think, is the most exciting one for many. The Valve Deck Art is confirmed. And surprisingly enough, this flew under the radar. This isn't actually new news, and not many people knew about it. In an interview with the Korean gaming outlet This Is Game, Valve product designer Greg Coomer seemingly reaffirmed that the company is working on a new VR headset. The interview was published in Korean on the This Is Game site last December, but has been shared recently in light of translated transcripts that indicate the outlet asked Coomer about a new Valve headset. While transcripts from online translations don't always accurately capture specific wording, in the translated response, Coomer seems to confirm that Valve has been working on a new VR headset lately. However, Coomer also said he can't confirm the existence of a specific product and can't comment on when Valve might release its results, but says there are obviously several projects going on in-house, and reaffirmed the company's faith in VR 
as a medium. A new Valve headset in the pipeline should come as no surprise, as there's been plenty of other evidence to suggest a work on a follow-up to Valve's 2019 Valve Index. And as we know from multiple Sadly It's Bradley videos, there's tons of leaks in the software and in patents as well. In case you guys don't watch Sadly It's Bradley but want to know more information on the deck card like completely in detail, make sure to check out his channel. But yeah, while this is no surprise to us that are following the leaks, this is pretty much a confirmation to me that Valve is working on some form of a VR headset. They have not lost faith in VR as a medium, and even if we don't know the what and the when, we basically have confirmation the Valve is definitely working on VR of some sorts. With that being said though, let's move on to some Beat Saber success, as Beat Saber has reportedly reached $255 million in revenue last October, according to documents obtained by the Wall Street Journal. Meta has previously announced that Beat Saber reached 4 million copies sold in February of 2021, a huge milestone for a VR exclusive game, before hitting $100 million in revenue on the Quest platform alone the following October. Meta's not provided any specific revenue details for the game since. But according to a few new documents viewed by the Wall Street Journal, Beat Saber has generated $255 million in sales over its lifetime by October of 2022. If you ask me, this is an incredibly big milestone for a VR only title. A lot of the other titles that we talk about are also PC titles. PC titles that can be played not only on PC, but also in VR. Therefore, automatically giving them more sales, as you don't need to own a VR headset in order to play them. Beat Saber, for a while now, has been kind of an icon for virtual reality. Even if you don't own a VR headset, you probably know what Beat Saber is, or have seen a few videos of it. I myself, I'm a massive fan of Beat Saber, and I'm currently still using it as part of my daily exercise. That, and with with Beat Saber working fully on Quest Standalone with mods, I can see why it's an incredibly popular game. That, and it's just very satisfying in general. Talking about great games, Green Hell VR. A ton of people were very excited for it, and a ton of people are enjoying it. I myself am a massive fan of survival type games. I love playing the Forest VR, and the vibe it gives me is just on another level. But the thing I missed from Green Hell VR is co-op. You see, with the Forest VR, I get the added benefit that I can play with PC players, which means I can play with my friends that don't have VR headsets. That, and I don't have to play alone, which sometimes in a forest, it's kind of creepy, especially when there's monsters coming after you. But now, in Kubo's VR adaptation of its popular open-world survival game, Green Hell, is getting a three-part DLC that's set to bring a bunch of new content to the game, which includes a new story, gameplay mechanics, and more. It's also set to get the long-awaited multiplayer mode at some point too. Called Spirits of Amazonia, the three-part DLC doesn't have a release window yet. However, in Kubo says it's testing the long-awaited multiplayer update, which will allow four players to play in co-op mode. And to quote, we know that this is taking a long time. However, we want to ensure that we take the time necessary to thoroughly develop and to test the multiplayer mode in order to provide the best possible experience to our players, the studio says on its Discord. And I appreciate this. We never want to see a game come out unfinished or a game come out with bugs. I still remember how that went with Cyberpunk. And with something as large as multiplayer, you really do want it to work quite well especially since multiplayer can introduce a ton of bugs with item syncing and things like that. I've seen it happen before, so I can appreciate a well-done version of a multiplayer game. But I will be waiting impatiently for it to come out. Here's something interesting. The HoloLens 2 will apparently get the Windows 11 update by June. Microsoft has confirmed that the HoloLens 2 will receive Windows 11 as an optional free update, and it's coming to the AR headset by late June. Following reports of downsizing in the HoloLens group, Microsoft's corporate vice president of Windows and devices announced this upcoming update as part of the company's strategic commitment to HoloLens 2 and Mixed Reality. While HoloLens 2 users can continue using Windows 10 once the update rolls out, Sailor claims updating to Windows 11 will improve app performance. To quote, the free upgrade to Windows 11 promises continuous platform support, meaning our customers can trust in the continued security of their devices, explains Robin Sailor. With the upgrade, HoloLens 2 users will continue to receive monthly security servicing updates that reinforce the protection of sensitive information while also improving app performance. So for those of you out there that have a HoloLens device and the HoloLens 2 specifically, you can be looking forward to receiving the brand new Windows 11 update. Windows 11 is quite a controversial one. I personally love it. And as a matter of fact, it's running better for me than Windows 10 did. But I also know quite a few people hate it. And I'm not entirely certain why. I guess moving the start menu to the middle wasn't something a lot of people liked, even though you can push it back to where it was. Let me know your opinions on Windows 10 versus 11 down below. Which one are you using and do you have a preference? With that being said though, let's move 
on to our last piece of news, which is on the Pico 4. I'm getting a call from unknown. The hell? As the Pico 4 Spring Bundle includes Peaky Blinders and three more games. The Quest loves getting game bundles released for the headset when you buy it. However, now it's the Pico 4's turn, as the Spring Bundle offers four free VR games if you purchase the headset from April 6th until July 21st, 2023. This latest bundle doesn't discount the 128 or 256 gigabyte models, but automatically adds four new games upon logging into a brand new Pico account. Alongside Peaky Blinders, new buyers will receive Les Mills Body Combat, Golf 5 E Club, and Wander. So in case you guys are looking to buy the Pico 4, you might think about buying it now to get four free titles with your brand new headset. You know, I'm never gonna say no to some free titles. Either way though, that's going to be it for today's video. If you guys liked it, please do leave a like, it costs you nothing and helps the channel out a lot. If you disliked it, I guess this button works too, but let me know why down below. Let me know your opinions on all the topics we've discussed in today's video down below. I love reading your guys' comments and your guys' opinions on everything. And of course, if you want to continue that conversation, check out our Discord and check out our Reddit down below as well. Thank you so, so much to all the lovely names going off to my right right now. Those guys are my Patreons and they are helping me out so, so much. So much love to you guys. Seriously, thank you for your support. And as usual, if you guys want to be notified about future content coming up on the channel, make sure to smack that subscribe button with your forehead, ding my bell, and see you again in the next video. Peace.